Hello everyone, I'm the Fireblades and welcome back to my Skyrim Grand Adventure. Now you join me in Fort Greenwall just north of Riften on my grand journey to solitude. I'm going to meet a lot of interesting things, people along the way and probably kill them too. If you haven't watched my other videos, um, it is going to be more serialised. There is going to be a continuity, so I'd recommend watching uh, the beginning just so you know exactly what's going on. If you don't know a mod um, that I've put in here, then feel free to go back. I might explain it, but I've just given you a taste of the combat system in the other episode. Um, and as you can see, I'm up for a bit of a challenge here. I need to be very selective about who I challenge and when. But this bear before me should not be an issue. So if I can get the drop right... Now I overshot, I think. Usually um, the object runs towards the arrow. Oh no, I can see the uh, dust was kicked up there a little bit. If I s same angle. Boom! Right in the ass. Right, now he's a bit suspicious. Now he knows exactly where I am. Oh, come on, you little shit. You can't just turn a corner like that. One more arrow, and then I am for the attack with the mace. <laughs> Power attack in there. So, Mr. Bear is down. Take my arrow out. I've got enough bear meat to last me for now. So. Oh, there's a the person I chucked over. Right, so, we've had a taste of combat, we've had a taste of the um, the interface, uh, and what to expect from this video. So, I'm officially marking this as the start of my grand adventure. So, onwards! <laughs> alright, alright, I'll stop, fine, whatever. Hello, mercenary conjurer. Yes? He's a mercenary, so he's just walking around. I can hire him because he's a mercenary. This is the, um, again, I think it's the interesting NPCs mod. Um, you can just hire people like Until that. next time. Because there were mercenaries about. Um, people who just made it, made the jobs for themselves. I technically am a mercenary. I've made enough money doing stuff for people. So, yeah, it would make sense. Now, I've come across my first area, Shaw's Stone. Nice little place. Hi. The Imperators think us all lawless beasts. I'm proof of their ignorance. Now I do have a convenient horses mod as well. This is why this dialogue interface has come up. Oh. Gold solves most problems, doesn't it? No, I don't think so. Fine. Um, oh, iron ore, thank you, as if I don't need that anymore. Um, now, I am on a bit of a quest to try and find some glass. Um, I'm trying to improve my glass bow, but first I need some refined glass. But this seems to be a bit the other way around, because the only way I can get refined glass is to sacrifice my glass bow. But then, of course, I won't have a glass bow to use my f refined glass on. Um, I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Yay! She said it. Uh, remember that. Remember just getting fucking tired of that. Well, you can live it all over again. Um, so this mod, um, I believe this is the complete crafting overhaul. Or this might be the smithing, uh, smithing overhaul. Um, that you can actually use different... You can use items to make the ingots. Uh, you can melt it down and make how however many respective items from it. So, I mean, I have just visited the blacksmith. However, I do need a place to stay. I'm um, just going to check the time. Now it's 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, I can get a bit more adventuring in. Alright, I said I'm not going to check the map, but I want to know where the next village is. As we can see, we're pretty far away from everything. 
my best bet may be to go back to Fort Greenwall and defeat the enemies in there. Maybe not where I was before. That might be a bit stupid. Stony Creek Cave. Uh, did I clear it all the way? I think I did. I'll set a map marker for there. And head towards there. Now, it's probably going to be dark by the time I get there. Um, and you'll see the other mod I've put in place for that. Yes. Which is Mike Fox's Dark Nights, I think. I think it's called that. Um, and you'll realise in Skyrim, if you've ever played the vanilla version, that the the mods, uh, sorry, the Dark Nights aren't actually that dark. The night is basically day but blue. So, again, you don't really need torches in the game. I don't know why they've put torches in the game, because um, you don't really need them. So, I like to do stuff that justifies the need for it. Oh, bear's just overtaken and killed someone, so... I need to stop by and kill the bear first. Is that too high? No, oh, right in the neck! Of course, that one goes wildly out of place. And I just use my mace again and twat it! Boom. Now, have you two done it where you don't hit each other? Good. Take the pelt. Oh, it wasn't a person. It was an elk. Wee! I'm alive again! Yay! Yay! How could I ever repay you? Um, you can jump. No! Some people prefer inns, but I've always loved to camp outdoors. <laughs> Nothing beats a warm fire, a bottle of mead, and a canvas of stars. Ah, of course. Of course. I have a tent. Again, this comes with, I think it comes from Frostfall, uh, the survival mod where uh, temperature affects you. Um, it can affect stats and it also can lead to death if you're not careful. So if you have a tent, you can camp down in a tent, keep yourself sheltered from the rain, which of course makes you wet, therefore colder. Um, and you can build a campfire as well, so I don't need to find a cave. Or... Oh yeah! Now I'm going to take this opportunity to explain maces, which I uh, was going to start banging on about in my first episode, but never got round to it. Now the mace, historically, has been a rather underrated weapon. Um, the sword has always taken precedence over the mace, but historically that's not really the case. The sword was actually pretty useless, especially um, it was during the early modern period, it was the 1400s, that sword, uh, the armour was getting so good that swords just literally didn't cut it. So instead they used heavy weapons instead, uh, try and use blunt force trauma. And now the maces got so uh, heavy and the people got so powerful that say for example you were to hit a knight in a suit of armour in the head with a mace, it could actually break their skull from the inside. Uh, the transfer of energy can actually give someone a heart attack through their breastplate um, and a sword just doesn't do that. And as you can see a mace is a big thing on the end. Uh, of course, a sword tapers towards the end. A sword is still good for cutting up if, you, if you've got no armour, or if you're trying to cut straight to the point, which is where the term comes. Now, the joins in the armour were joined by leather straps called points. So, of course, if you're trying to ta dismantle the enemy's armour by cutting it, you'd cut straight to the point, meaning to just be direct with the subject. Um, and that's where that term comes from. So again, I'm going a bit, trying to do a bit immersion friendly by using a mace because it's most practical. Um, it's quite heavy, and but still, it was one of the main choices of combat for um, a medieval soldier. And if you um. If you could afford it, you'd have a fancy, thi fancy thing like this. But if you couldn't, you'd just get a brick and uh, nail it to a stick. Anything. Um, anything that the blacksmith could just hammer out for you, which you could keep in certain time you went for war. Um, they were owned by the landlord. Uh, the people who paid rent, the peasants on the land, paid the landlord. Um, so if the landlord went to battle, the peasants would have to follow. They were levied into it. Hey, friend. It's good to see another merry soul enjoying this fine day. Yes. Ah, but you look tired. Come, share a bottle of hunting brew mead with me. I would love to. 
Ah, nothing like fine spirits to help raise your... Well, your spirits. Ha, <laughs> good joke. Cheers, my friend. May your adventures find you fame and fortune. Thank you, Reveler. I shall remember you. <laughs> when I reach solitude, I will tell everybody of your tales. <laughs> oh, pardon me. And hiccups, apparently. I'm just going to check the time. 8.41. I've got... Don't yawn. I'm tired too. I'm just going to check my needs. I'm feeling slightly pe uh, currently peckish, not thirsty, slightly tired and sober. So I can adventure for a little while longer. I'm just going to have a look at the active effects this is causing. Slightly thirsty, ready for a drink. Slightly tired, ready for a nap. Sober. I'm sober. And somewhere... Peckish. Hunger. Now as you can see, these aren't having uh, status effects just yet. It may do later on. Now, as you can see, the night is getting slightly darker. So, this is where my wearable lanterns mod comes in very, very handy. Um, if you stayed for my second video, where we invaded Greenwall and got absolutely slaughtered by uh, bandit plunderers, um, you'd have found it was very, very dark in there. Uh, nah, don't need more iron. It, yeah, it was very, very dark in there, so again, the Wearable Lanterns mod is a massively useful addition. Another bear. He seems to wander on the roads quite a lot. Let's see if I can get this. Oosh! May have been a rock. Shut up! Ooh! Now, I had no idea you could use a pickaxe like this. Oh, pardon me. Just need to set my shield. Now, you can just do it in third-person view like this. Um, again, the Complete Crafting Overhaul mod has um, influenced uh, how much you can get um, for how many strikes. Usually it takes nine strikes to get three ores. But I actually found out that mining can be very boring um, because you don't really do anything in the process of mining except for um, just pick up the ores, basically. I've, I've sped it up a little bit. And... I've also changed the amount, um, only because to get one iron ore, you need, sorry, one iron ingot, you need five iron ores. Um, and for the, the price you have to pay for the reward you get is, to be, to me, it's a bit disproportionate. So I've just changed the ratio of how much you get per mining operation. Now, as you can see, it's getting very dark, so I'm going to crack open Maybe the lantern. It's my boots. They don't seem like they have decent grip. Oh, don't they? Well, I'm ready for whatever comes next. Take whatever you need. I can manage. Do you have any other boots? Do I have any other boots? Nope. Everything's color coded. Light armor is brown. Um, heavy armor is silver. Let's go. So of course this makes it a lot easier. Now you know what? I'm just going to camp here. I'm just going to find a place off the track. This seems like a perfect spot. So, just going to go into my inventory and take up. I want to pitch the tent. I'll pitch it there. And as we can see, we've got a tent in a second. We've got a. T there we go. So now I'm going to cut wrong one, wrong special power there. I just nearly iced my tank. Um, survival skills, yes. Bring up the inventory, harvest some wood with which to build a campfire. Now again, in real life you would do this you'd have to gather wood, make a campfire. Um, so I don't mind taking the time to do it. 
again for the immersion's sake. Just need to get some more. I need six wood to build a campfire. Lol. So let's get six wood. Uh, but. No, I'm just gonna check the time. Ah, brilliant. 11 p.m. This is something you gotta take into account, um, consideration as well. Sometimes it, well, it does take time to gather materials. You don't just do it instantly. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, my warmth is deteriorating. Now, I'm just gonna go back and build a campfire. Now, if it's yellow, it means that it's w within range. If, if I put it over here, it'll turn blue, which means it's not in range. Which means if I sit down here, because it's yellow, it will warm me up. Now the campfire has been placed, now I just need the wood, add six firewood, and there we go, we're nice and warm. So, now, just going to sit down in my tent. Ah, beautiful. Now I'm going to eat some food. What do you want to do? Exposure 18. Uh, exit, and I'm going to eat some food. Have that ale. Thirst has been quenched. And I'm full. Just going to check my needs. Satiate, satiated, yep, not thirsty, tired and sober. So. Oh, what did I do? Ah, use lantern. Don't need to use the lantern. And as you can see, my mace is down there. My boots are down there. I haven't really done anything for my followers. I'm not that... Uh, advanced with it. Oh, my shield has been placed there. So, I'm going to get up and lie down, pack up, use lanterns. So I'm going to lie down and go to sleep. Um, the message is at the top, this footwear provides standard exposure protection. This is part of the Frostfall mod. The more items of clothing you wear and the... There we go. And the uh, the colder it is, they can influence the uh, the temperature, your level of comfort, and therefore your stats. So I'm going to rest for seven hours and get seven six and a half hours sleep, and then I can get up and adventure in the morning. What do you think the folks back home in Donstar are doing right now? I'll bet you ten gold pieces Carl is waving a flag at me. Oh, boom. So it feels a little dry. Okay. Mm Boom. Right, I forgot. I'm ready for whatever comes next. Uh, I didn't forget that. No, I need to trade some Take things with you. Take whatever you need. I can manage. And I've actually got some firewood with one of my companions. To the next fight. I'm right behind you. So. These, again, why the, my followers carry? come in handy. Uh, she's got firewood there. I'm going to give them the rest of the firewood that I didn't use. Um, and this will save time, which means I can get more time in for adventuring. So, I'm just going to, again, have something to eat and something to drink. If I eat raw food, I can actually succumb to disease. And the diseases are very punishable in this game. They have a bigger status defect. Uh... So I'm going to try and avoid that. A light snack. Oh, I've eaten too much. Because I'm eating too much, I'm going to be very slow. I'm going to be a lot sluggish. I think my speed takes a 20% drop. Now, I'm going to drink some water. My thirst has been quenched. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm just going to check my needs again currently glutted, so my speed has taken a hit. Not thirsty, not tired, and sober. 
So, I'm gonna pack up the tent in my old kit bag. Da -da 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 -da. Packed up the tent. Oh, there's a fucking flying mammoth over there. What the hell? Oh, they must have tried the uh, the Skyrim space program. How was it up there? So, as you can see, we've got flying mammoths uh, to contend with on our journey. I'm probably going to make White Run, or uh, sorry, Windhelm, uh, my next checkpoint. I might see if I can sell some stuff there. It seems to be that way I'm going, and I'm going to go on top uh, the north end. I might I'll probably stop by Winterhold as well through there via Markarth of Solitude. Um, again, I'm still cartographing the area, and I'm still planning the journey. So, until next time, I will be, um, yeah, I'm just going to be standing here waiting. So, if you like the video, give it a like, and if you want to see more of my Grand Skyrim adventure, give my channel a subscribe, and I'll keep you updated. So, until next time, when we'll continue this grand journey in Skyrim, Bye! It's called country. <laughs> India is the birthplace of the fearful world's great people. It's and Jay is the It is a fashion of land. Mystery solved! The end, it's the woman all along. <laughs>